Welcome back, everybody. You know, we're going to talk about a subject that's a little ambiguous. We're going to try to make sense of it. Are you a good person? What determines moral values? Well, we have an author this morning joining us who wrote the book, The Science of Good and Evil. Please welcome Michael Shermer. Thank you. I call Thank it you. ambiguous. Do you call it an ambiguous subject? It's a, it's a difficult subject because the subject of good and evil and morality is usually dealt with by theologians and philosophers, and here I'm a scientist, and so what I'm arguing in the science of good and evil is that it's not that we scientists have the final answers, but that we can bring to bear studies by scientists on good and evil topics. For example, in MRI studies on human brains as they change when they're interacting with another human being and another MRI machine, you can actually see which areas of the brain light up when they're cooperating with each other. They, they, they play these little games which they get rewarded with cash. Or if they're defecting with, uh, against somebody else, a different area of the brain lights up. And it turns out, for example, that it feels good to do something good for somebody when you're cooperating. And the same area of the brain that lights up for that lights up for like addictive drugs, for thinking positive mm -hmm. thoughts, uh, for the sexual response and so on. So actually doing something good feels good. But what is good? Who is the barometer for morals? Well, I claim that uh, we have an evolved moral sense, that as a social primate species, that we have evolved these mechanisms for dealing with each other, for conflict resolution, for cooperation, we also have a negative side. We have a dark side. We are, I, I think, within our groups, we're fairly cooperative and nice to each other. Between groups, it, it's, we are naturally tribalistic and nasty to each other. So the long, in the long run, what we've been doing and what we need to continue to do is to expand that circle of who we count as in-group members, which is really what this whole gay marriage thing is all about. It's, it's about should we include those people in our circle of who gets rights and freedoms and liberties that we've extended to this many people? Should we continue to extend it further out? Religious beliefs enter into what is good and bad. Can an atheist be a good person? They sure can. I hope so, because I'm one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, in fact, um, I think all people have a great capacity for doing good and bad. Most of us, most of the time, do the right thing and do well. There's no data showing that religious people are more moral than non-religious mm -hmm. people. In fact, I use George Barna's st statistics. He's an evangelical Christian who monitors his own group, as it were, and finds that divorce rates are just as high as our infidelity rates amongst Christians as non-Christians and so on. Everybody has this capacity. Religion was the first institution on the Seen to codify moral principles and say, look, we recognize that there's a lot of nasty aspects of human nature, and there's going to be a set of rules to try to guide those. This is why religions pound every week into their parishioners, look, don't do this and this, and mm -hmm. don't put yourself in this situation where you're going to be tempted by, you know, infidelities, by drugs, by this and that, and so on, because everybody knows that we are tempted to those things. Now, could morals, and I use that word in the ambiguous sense, because who knows mm -hmm. what morals are, I know there is good and bad. Is it gender-based? Do you find difference between men and women when it comes to more moral values? Uh, there are gender differences in those MRI studies I told you about. Um, uh, women are more cooperative than men, particularly at, in, at the beginning of exchanges. And what, uh, what, what the process of exchange is all about is establishing trust with one another. You know, it, within a, a small community of people where you, you know everybody, they're your relatives and so on, it's easy to be trusting. How do we deal with people that are outsiders, that we don't know? And the way, is, and the, and the way to that is to establish trust. Women are better at that with other women. Women are not so trusting when they encounter strange men, and there's probably good reasons for that. And men are more competitive with other men. They're more cooperative if they think they're interacting with a woman. All right, here's the deal. I wanted to talk about Martha Stewart, Kenneth Lay. We don't have time. I'm still a good person, but I have to cut you off. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to talk to Michael Shermer, please check him out tonight at Powell 730. Michael Shermer, The Science of Good and Evil is the book. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you.